Jake the Snake, Oliver Ico versus the Italian Emperor Don Lorenzo, the Battle of the Stone Giants, and the greatest defenders the series has seen as of yet, as these two mark the pinnacle of U20 defending. And now with Ico getting his anime debut, it has never been more fitting for us to look at their stats, abilities, and explore their best feats to determine who would come on top and who is the best defender of Blue Lock. But before we do however, if you enjoy matchups like this or everything blue lock, please consider subscribing and joining my community discord server. And now without any further ado, let's jump in. Oliver Motherfreakin Aiko, Japan's captain and the first real defender we've seen in blue lock. In his first showing, he took everything that Isigi learned in the second and third selection and completely crushed it with his snake defending, immediately capturing our attention and living up to the hype he has been building ever since his introduction. Of course, to describe any player, we gotta start with his physicality. And the case for Aiko is that he has a great physicality. I wouldn't say it is well-rounded by any means. However, if you look at his stats, you would see that he has no weakness to speak of. But of course, first, we gotta start with his greatest stat, which is his jumping ability. As I just said, our introduction to Aiko was a jumping ability feat, where he completely crushed Isigi's breakthrough. From there, however, we've seen how he was able to dominate literally everyone in the air. And honestly, I would easily say he has the best aerial maneuverability in blue lock. After, of course, the king Aryu, and maybe only rivaled by Kunigami. And speaking of musclehead Kunigami, next let's talk about his raw power and strength, which is also really really high. Now, he might not rival Kunigami or Baro or Tokimitsu per se, however he bullies nearly everyone else, even New Gen 11 like we've seen him do with Kaiser multiple times, which kinda makes him the perfect all-rounder defender in terms of physicality, since he dominates every striker in the air, and also he holds the ground with a firm fist. But unfortunately, this muscle mass and this dominance on the ground comes at the cost of his overall speed, which I wouldn't say it is low, I mean 81 is not low by any means means, however, it's not great either compared to players like Kaiser with 91. And finally, let's talk about his endurance, which honestly is just off the charts. I mean, in the Ubers game, he was everywhere doing everything, from defending to gaining control of the midfield to even trying to stop Noah. Add to that him having metavision, which in itself requires a high enough stamina to be employed the entirety of the game. And speaking of this broken vision of his, it's time for us to get real, as now we are going to explore his abilities and weapons. Which, I gotta say, he only has one or I would say a group of weapons that serve the same purpose or enact in the same general area and make him near unbeatable on the ground. And if you think about it, with his aerial sovereignty, Aiko really is the perfect midfielder. But as always, we gotta start somewhere. And first, let's talk about the weapon that is at the origin of all of his other weapons. Of course, I'm talking about his insanely high perception. In fact, Aiko's perception is so high that it is only rivaled by a few select players, most of which employ metavision as well. And this perception allows him to get a full grasp of the whole situation of the enemy front line, enabling him to better understand what his opponents are trying to do. But, it's not actually limited to just that. In fact, Aiko is one of the few players that can tell what kind of options the enemy team is having. And because of this, and in addition to his high endurance, Aiko is the type of defender that can cover several threats at once, like we saw him do in the U20 game, to the point he seemed to be teleporting to block shots, while at the same time he was completely pocketing Ren. Which honestly is such an insane feat, and in fact, in order to beat him, Rin had to go berserk really shows how insane Aiko is. Beyond that perception however, his eyes also present an insane but also unique weapon that we didn't really see any other player in blue lock present, which is his analytical eye. With this ability, Aiko is able to instantly analyze his opponent's weapons and understand immediately what makes them tick making Aiko a very adaptive defender, which is why he excels at countering many players at the same time like we saw him do in the U20 game with Rin, Isigi and Yuki, or better yet, how he completely dominated Isigi in the Ubers game. And this actually leads me to talk about a small weapon before we carry on with his perception related abilities. Of course here I'm talking about his dueling ability. 
Saying that Aiko dominates the ground is an understatement, because with his great physique, high endurance and his analytical eye, Aiko can pretty much take on most players one on one and still win, and actually like we've seen in the U20 game he can take two on one players no problem, and unlike other dueling abilities, due to his being born out of him perfectly analyzing his opponents, one can't fully exert their strong weapons against Aiko, because he would specifically counter said weapons making dueling him one on one not only hard or tricky but near impossible to overcome for short sighted players like Yuki or actually sometimes he seems unbeatable to non downright broken players like Berserker Ren Furthermore, this amazing dominance over the grounds is wonderfully made into one package through his final and biggest weapon Of course here I'm talking about Metavision Now for those who live under a rock and don't really understand what Metavision is it's when a player utilizes his peripheral vision in order to take in every information possible on the field or at least everything around him. Furthermore, the player shakes his head in all directions in order to increase his field of vision, making it near impossible to miss anything happening surrounding the player, which honestly, just from the looks of it, it sounds really impressive and really OP. However, Metavision comes with very costly requirements. First, insane stamina, as basically the brain is on overtime the whole 90 minutes. Furthermore, and speaking of the brain, the player needs to have a big brain enough to take in all of the information at once and be able to analyze, judge and react to said situations, which is perfectly exemplified with Aiku, whom he has metavision on Isiki's level before his recent awakening. And to make matters worse for his opponents, his metavision is what we call analytical, because on top of what Isiki, Hiyori or Kaiser might do, Aiko analyzes his opponents at the same time, and with a near 360 field of view, it's really hard to beat Aiko's metavision, especially for players that aren't really adaptive enough, which honestly this weapon alone was what took Aiko to the next level, as we seen him do in the U20 game. Once he unlocked metavision, it became near impossible for the U20 players to even score, until of course Baro threw everything into chaos. And if you think about it, you have a player that dominates both the air and the grounds, and you slap metavision on top of that which enable him to be literally everywhere and you get a defender that is actually worthy of rivaling even the strikers when it comes to salary in the neo egoist league which by the way is such an underrated feat for Aiko but going back to his defending and due to its versatility and Aiko's ability to hold the back line better than anyone he actually becomes a very mandatory inclusion to any team he plays for but also, because he covers a plethora of options, whether on the ground or airborne, Aiko is quite literally the ideal defender. But can he beat the Italian Don? If Oliver Aiko is idealism personified, Lorenzo could only be described by one word, phenomenal, as this Italian emperor breaks every rule there is to break about football in the realm of blue lock. With the saddest backstory, Lorenzo is a very playful and friendly character, often acting goofy and not taking things seriously, and this is a bit mind-boggling to us because Lorenzo is an insane defender without any ego. Hell, he is the best new gen 11 we've seen thus far without any ego, and it actually makes you wonder what kind of a monster he would be one day when he unlocks his full ego. But honestly, the mind-boggling tricks doesn't stop with his personality, because if we jump to his physicality, it also brings breaks the mold completely. As you can immediately tell from looking at Lorenzo, he is a very skinny dude, and thus his strength is pretty average, but sometimes it's rather impressive for how skinny he is. We've seen him beat players like Kaiser and Isigi very easily when it comes to physical confrontation, despite both having a bigger muscle mass. Speed wise, again he is pretty good, not great by any means at 83 but it's not really bad. However, what's broken about him is actually his insanely high endurance. The guy dominates the defensive line, but also is one of the best midfielders there is, and juggling between the two positions effortlessly like he does throughout a full game indicates his insanely high endurance and stamina numbers. But finally, let's talk about his weakest stat, which is his jumping ability. For how insane of a defender he is, Lorenzo actually has zero feats in this area, and this being his weakest stat is further proved by Snuffy's choice to put Ario next to him, so the latter can take care of the aerial territories while Lorenzo dominates the ground. 
And speaking of him dominating the ground, just so you can understand how big of a stone giant he is, we gotta shift gears and talk about his abilities and weapons. The first of which is actually a physical trait, but due to how oppressive it is and due to how defining it is for Lorenzo, I am going to talk about it as a dedicated weapon, which is of course his agility. And at this point, I can confidently say that his agility is one of the best in the U20 category, I think only beaten by Gagamaro and Nagi. And and I truly believe that he can even beat players like Shido. Just look at this, the way that Don launches himself towards the ball or his opponents is so outwardly that this weapon single-handedly allowed him to compete or even destroy the best metavision users on numerous times. This is because they can't really account for his explosiveness. One moment he's here and the next he is in your face. And honestly, it even allowed him to perform impossible feats like stopping the Kaiser impact and even beating his predator eyes, which is insanely impressive because not even MetaVision users can beat the predator eyes once it locks in on a shooting course. And what's funny is that Gagamaru is the second and only player who beat the predator eyes, so it seems that agility is the counter to predator eyes. However, I gotta say this, beating the Kaiser Impact is a story of its own. You see, not a single player can boast about this, with the exception of the young prodigy Loki. And if you ever watched any of my videos, you'd know. Rivaling the pro in any feat, no matter how trivial, no matter how small, is the best selling point for any U20 player and really proves how great of a weapon this is. And actually, due to how oppressive it is, Lorenzo becomes such a wild card on the field that instantly closes the distance to whatever targets he chooses. But I gotta say this, his lunging ability actually relates to a weakness of his, which I will cover at the end of our character assessment. For now, let's talk about another weapon of his. Get this, Lorenzo is the player that has the feat of completely neutralizing the unstoppable at that point Michael Kaiser, and this is in part due to his agility but also it is due to his perception, which honestly it is off the charts. I wouldn't say it is as insane as Metavision users, however we've seen him multiple time rivaling them. I mean through this insane perception, Lorenzo was able to understand Kaiser's plays who are born through his Metavision and perfectly countering them. Furthermore, he was capable of dodging and dribbling past Metavision users point blank like he did with ECG multiple times and then with both ECG and Kaiser, a feat not even other Metavision users like Ryo can boast about, or hell not even regular Ren, whom with the Berserker State dealt with the duo of Kaiser and ECG in a different way. Now, this perception is also very crucial for Lorenzo to perform well in his other role. As I said before, Lorenzo doesn't just excel at being a defender, he also excels at being the beating heart of the team, and actually one of the best midfielders we've seen thus far. There is of course partially due to his perception and agility but also due to one of the most broken dribbling abilities in Blue Lock. Lorenzo's special physicality and insane agility enables him to perform the weirdest dribbling moves we've seen, which are at the core of his dribbling ability. Much like the Jenga, which is utilized by Lavinio and Bajira, Lorenzo completely throws his center of gravity left and right, with his upper body being completely detached from his footwork, making it near impossible for anyone to read the direction of his dribbles. Because as you all know, usually it's the upper body that gives off the direction of your dribble. And again, it's kind of funny and it fits that most of his feats are funny. You see, Lorenzo doesn't employ any insane dribbling moves like Bajorasai or Levy. It's just that his opponents often find it very hard to figure out what the hell is happening with the way his body wobbles. And when you couple this with his insane perception, you get a midfielder that can very easily take the ball from one goal to another. After of course being the biggest wall who just stopped an enemy attack. Which at this point I can call Lorenzo a one man team. But also this enables Lorenzo to direct the pacing of the game or hell even be the beating heart of the front line. Which is always mind boggling to me as if being insane at defending wasn't enough for him. Lorenzo also needed to dominate the attack in midfield. However, and believe it or not, this is not all there is to the Italian Don. Because even though he excels as a defender in a general sense, Lorenzo's biggest selling point is actually his ability to straight up lock down almost any striker if he sets his sights on him. As I said before, we've seen this being employed to completely neutralize Kaiser, where Lorenzo quite literally pocketed him for the entirety of the game. 
to the point he was not even able to do anything unless Lorenzo attended to other dangerous players like Yuki, Hiyori or Isigi. And if you think about it, this equates to a death sentence for teams with one main striker. The only reason Bastard were able to do anything was actually due to the secondary access presented by Isigi. And again, his insane perception and agility play a huge role in this. But Lorenzo also presents an insane dueling ability that might even be the highest in the U20 category, especially on defense. To the point he's actually the only player we've seen not getting even challenged by others one-on-one, -on -one, not even once on defense, even by dribblers like Ness and Hiyori. Hell, even Nagi with his craziness froze in place, and by the time he conjured enough strength to do anything, it was already 2-on-1 with Aiko joining. But I gotta say, this dueling ability is really high because Lorenzo presents an ocular ability that specifically help him in these situations. Now you have to understand, it has never been stated straight up in the manga, but much like we know Kaiser has the predator eyes from the design only, and how it is similar to Baro's eyes, we can tell that Lorenzo utilizes the assassin's eyes that were presented by Karasu in the third selection. Not only does Lorenzo present the same design as Karasu, but also his playing style suggests the same, as when he locks down a character he seems like an improved and a much better Karasu. And we kinda got a confirmation for this in the bastard game, when we saw Lorenzo target the blind spot in Kaiser's meta vision, which honestly makes him such a broken character and downright unbeatable man. Like he found a blind spot in a vision that is supposed to eliminate blind spots. What the hell man, like he's downright unbeatable. Well he would be if he wasn't for his stupid weakness, which is simply his mind fortitude. As I said before, Lorenzo is a very playful character, he doesn't take things as seriously. And often this limits his cognitive ability, which is actually really bad and is especially deadly against very smart players like Isigi and Hiyori. Now, with his insane perception, one might think he is inescapable, and while I can see that to be true one on one, his impulsiveness and his less serious nature can be exploited when he performs his signature lunges, because as impressive as they are, if utilized recklessly, they can leave Lorenzo in a state where he can be countered, especially if one expects it, or better yet, if one is actually luring the Italian done, like he already did. And I honestly feel that this is a balancing thing, because Lorenzo with Sai and Isigi's seriousness, he would be near them impossible to beat. I mean, he is still an insane defender, and he is still phenomenal, and hell, he is the new gen 11 center back, with honestly weapons and ability that make him very unique, but also very deadly. And the fact that he dominates the midfield as good as he does in the back line makes him quite the insane player. But can he beat the Japanese captain Oliver Aiko? Don Lorenzo vs Oliver Aiku is a matchup written in the stars, the two best defenders in the series duking it out in an all out war for the throne of the best stone giant. Now funny enough, before we talk about who would win, I gotta say that these two fit so well together, and I'm not really talking about their friendship here. Think about it, Aiko's insane versatility and wide range defending, with Lorenzo's deadliness and dominance over one on ones, make for an insane combo defense where they form a wall that is near impossible to penetrate. But how they would fare against one another, and who is the overall better at defending? Now, given that Lorenzo is a new gen 11 player, one might assume that this automatically puts him above Aiko. However, given that the title was given prior to the NEL, and prior to the blue lockers evolving, we can't really jump the gun here. I mean Kaiser is the new gen 11 striker, but he is rivaled by at least 4 blue lockers at this point. Ren, Isigi, Baro, and of course Shido. And so we can't really rule out Aiko out yet, especially because this is an overall assessment. And in fact, this might even swing towards the Japanese captain due to his versatility and his meta vision. I mean, for once, we can straight up say Aiko is better when it comes to aerial defending. That's a point that he beats Lorenzo easily and with no efforts, because the latter simply has no feats in this regards, and so it's actually an easy win for Oliver. And in the same sense, but not to the same degree, I feel in the perception fight, Aiko trumps Lorenzo completely, especially with Oliver presenting that level of meta vision that rivals even Easy and Kaiser prior to their awakenings. This really means Aiko beats Lorenzo here clean. I mean, for once, there is a reason Snuffy relied on his assessment, and his assessment specifically, to counter players that limit Snuffy's options, which I gotta assume that Snuffy came up with this plan to account for the pros, which doesn't mean Aiko might beat a pro, but his assessment is good enough for Snuffy to actually rely on him in a situation that might call out a pro. 
which honestly, as I said before, is a huge feat, rivaling the pros in anything, is great for the U20 defenders. However, if you think about it, and for this matchup, this is about it. This is about the extent of where Aiko beats Lorenzo. And I mean, winning in a perception and having metavision is a huge deal, and would have definitely secured the win for Aiko, had it not been for just how crazy and outwardly Lorenzo is. I mean, for starter, locking down Kaiser is such a huge feat that Aiko himself failed at. Even though he won few times, his metavision proved useless in the face of Kaiser's predator eyes, even while having the help of Aryo and Sendo. And I know this is not Aiko's fault, I mean metavision has a horrible track record of stopping the predator eyes. Just ask Isigi or Kaiser. The fact of the matter that Lorenzo's assassin's eyes and his insane agility completely dominated every weapon Kaiser had, including both of his visions and his Kaiser impact, which honestly is such a scary feat. I mean again, Loki being the only other guy to stop the Kaiser impact should tell you everything about how crazy this feat is from Lorenzo. And this is just one way of looking at things. Lorenzo is still unbeatable one on one, on defense and on offense. On defense, whether be it on and off the ball, and when we get to offense, we gotta talk about his insane dribbling ability that is off the charts. Or even his whole thing of being the heart of the attack in midfield. Which, by the way, it is another area where he dominates Aiko. Lorenzo is not just oppressive in the back line, he is also an insane defender. And while I know Aiko could be a striker too, but we really did not see any impressive feat as of yet. And so from all of this, the scales went widely towards the Italian Don, and it seems that it is not even close. But due to his weakness, and Aiko's clear dominance in the air and perception, I'd say it gets quite close. However, I wouldn't say it is enough and I can't in good conscience give the W to Aiko here, as it stands right now. I think Lorenzo is the overall better defender and the overall better player and the clear winner of our matchup today. However, with that, I think that's it for today, guys. I really hope you enjoyed the video and until next time, thank you for watching.